Welcome. NOAA has just released its June 2019 Global Climate Report, and this video is a summary of that report. Well, let's start with a quick summary of the overall situation, which was quite simple. June of 2019 was the warmest uh, June on record globally, on land, in the oceans, in the northern and in the southern hemispheres. That means overall, we've had 413 consecutive months with temperatures above the 20th century average. Let's first take a look at a map showing the departure from the long-term average for each one of these pixels. And you can see that in Western Russia, there was a large cool area, which was more than compensated for by the overheating of most of Europe, Northern Canada and Alaska, as well as Siberia. So America also was much above normal temperatures. We still have the remnants of the weak El Nino in the Eastern Pacific shown here. The map that shows the departure from average temperature is a very useful and interesting map to look at. However, none of that tells you whether the temperatures there are new records or not. To do that, we look at what's called a percentiles map, where record cold is represented by dark blue and record warm is represented by dark red. You'll note there are no record cold pixels in this whole map. In fact, there's only one pixel that's much cooler than average, and that's just north of India. There are hundreds of pixels that are much warmer than average and 154 pixels that show record warm temperatures in that area. I've added June now to my six year matrix uh, in its number one position. And if you look closely, 2019 is beginning to outpace every year but 2016. So it's possible that 2019 will become the second, or perhaps at worst, the third warmest year on record. However, we are losing our El Nino fairly soon. So that may bring these temperatures back down. We'll see as time goes by. Let's next take a look at the conditions in the upper atmosphere. We'll start at the lower troposphere. That's an altitude of about four kilometers. And we're comparing the results from UAH and RSS. They get very similar results, UAH finding it was the second warmest and RSS finding it was the warmest June on record. And their average trend between them is 0.15 degrees centigrade per decade. Now that is slightly lower than what we get at the surface, but that's exactly what you'd expect at that altitude. Further up at about seven kilometers, that's called the mid troposphere. Both groups agreed it was the second warmest and the average trend there is again a bit lower at 0.1 degrees centigrade per decade. The stratosphere, which is an altitude of about 17 kilometers, they find it was respectively the third and fourth coolest and with an average cooling trend of about 0.41 degrees centigrade per decade. This is exactly what you'd expect if you were adding greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. It was the second lowest June record for Northern Hemisphere sea ice. That's mainly the Arctic sea ice and it represents 20 consecutive years with below average sea ice. In June of 2019, the Antarctic sea ice reached its lowest level recorded during the month of June. And that's the fourth consecutive year that we've had below average uh, sea ice in the Antarctic. I would also note that in the last six years, the Antarctic has lost 18% of its sea ice. As for the status of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, in June, it averaged out at 413.9 parts per million. That's three parts per million higher than it was in June of 2018. So what is happening about El Nino? At the moment, we're in very, very weak El Nino conditions, but we're forecast probably in the next month or so to drop into ENSO neutral conditions and remain that way for most of the rest of the year, possibly even going into a weak La Nina by early next year. So what's the big fuss about? What I'm worried about here is the fact that we are setting new high temperature records when we have a very, very weak El Nino and we're also at or near solar minimum. So neither of those two factors can be really influencing the, the data as we see it. So what I've done here is I've plotted the temperature anomaly for every month that has the exact same Southern Oscillation Index as uh, June of 2019. And as you can see, uh, it forms a fairly tight curve and that curve is shows that this rate of warming is in fact accelerating. 
Well, let's see what the U.S. climate was doing during June of 2019. Here is a map of the contiguous United States. And you can see it's rather odd because it's cool in the middle of the country, yet all around the edges it's warmer than average. So the west coast uh, along the southern states, up the east coast, and to some extent the northern tier states are all above average, yet the Mississippi and Ohio valleys are all uh, below temperature. Overall, June was only 0.1 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average, which would pretty much make it an average month. So what was the precipitation situation in June of 2019 for the United States? Well, you can see again, it's a tale of two zones. The West was very much drier than average. The East was very much wetter than average. We had record dry areas around the San Francisco Bay Area and in Southern California and Arizona where they border with Mexico. We had some record wet areas in North Carolina and in the Ohio Valley. Let's do an update of the tornadoes in uh, the United States as a result of the activity during June. We're now at 1,090 tornadoes so far this year, which is a, a leveling off of the pace that we had earlier in the year. And fortunately, there have been no fatalities since I last talked to you. So to end, we'll go over a quick summary. As I mentioned in uh, June, the Arctic sea ice was at its second lowest extent. In the Antarctic, it was at its lowest extent. We've had high temperatures all around the globe. There was a lot of additional rain in the middle part of the United States and Australia seems to be going through a very dry patch at the moment. So until next time, please stay safe and uh, I'll see you uh, this time next month.